How'd you get that on your phone? Stick around for today's video, and people are going to be asking you that exact same question. Uh, probably not so much how, but more along the lines of why. Either way, uh, give me six minutes of your time, and I'll blow your mind with how you can get G-Code on your cell phone. Basically, uh, I've got a program here and I want to be able to simulate this on my phone. So obviously the first thing we need to do is actually post this into G-Code. So I'm just going to post this up here quick. And this will save into the uh, selected location that I've already previously chosen for my programs. Now, so next up, what you need to do, this is probably the most important step in this entire process, is saving this file into a location on your computer that is accessible as well on your phone. So typically you're going to use something like uh, some sort of cloud syncing service, Dropbox, uh, OneDrive, Google Drive, whatever it may be. So I'm going to do a save as, and I'm going to throw this over into my OneDrive. And in OneDrive I've got a folder that I always use for, for getting things back and forth between phone and computer. And just to give this thing a, a little more distinctive name, I'll call this file tt.nc, click save, and now I can get to this file on my phone. So let's head over to there now. So here I am on my phone and up on screen I've got the shortcut to launch into Cam Instructor on my web browser. And once that's opened up, what I'm gonna do is up in the search menu bar, I'm gonna type in NC Viewer and hit search. So first result here is, is NC Viewer. This is the website we're gonna be using to both backplot and edit our G code. So NC Viewer works inside of any browser, so if you're on um, an iPhone, you can use Safari. If you don't like Chrome, you could use uh, Firefox, whatever it uh, may be. Uh, but basically, when you first open up this website, you're going to get a, a, a text document here already. It kind of tells you the features and, and what this thing is capable of. Uh, so let's have a look around a little bit more here. Now, there is a sample file included in the default software, so I click on Sample, and here you can see the sample G code. Uh, basically, G1s, G2s, and G3s, you can see all that motion. And I'm going to click this button here up at the top left, and that will hide the G code and bring us into the actual backplot of that uh, G code file. So in here we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can pan up and down, left and right, we can twist things around. So the movements are simple, like with any other smartphone app, you can pinch, zoom, and, and scroll left and right, to one finger to rotate, uh, two fingers to zoom. You can even click on the faces of the, uh, the icon in the top right hand corner and snap to uh, quick viewports if you want to call them viewports I guess. So clicking that same button brings us back into the code. Let's try a quick little edit here. Now editing is a little bit tricky. Obviously once the keyboard pops up you lose a lot of real estate so you got to be careful when you're scrolling around to find that spot where you wanted to enter some code in. And I'm going to put a little comment in here by this T3 that's just an indication of this is where a tool stage is happening. So I'm going to have to uh, switch my keyboard here to a caps lock so don't forget to do that. Get your caps locks turned on and then we can insert our comments. Okay, and we'll put our keyboard away once we're all done. And there's our edited G code. So syntax highlighting and everything, that's fantastic. That's very helpful. And any changes, we can re-backplot and then go through and actually look at our file. And here it is actually playing. We can see some tool motion happening. Uh, turning the screen sideways does give you a little bit more real estate as far as width. Uh, I, I would think it's probably still better if it's straight up and down. It's uh, there's no good way. You're on a phone, so there's nothing optimal here. So I think straight up and down is still probably still the best way to view the file. Now what I would recommend, this is something that you're going to use a lot, is I would add this to the home screen. And you can get to that by going to the top of the browser, clicking on the three dotted button. And in there is a button called Add to Home Screen. And when you click on that, uh, basically this NC Viewer icon will be added to your home screen as if it was an actual app instead of you having to go into your browser and browse to the actual ncviewer.com location. You can now just tap on this icon and you're right back into the app. So from here, let's open up our G code files. So I'm gonna click on the open button. I'm gonna use my file menu here to browse to the uh, location of my saved file. So I'm already in my transfers location. And if I sort by modified date, there is my, my tt.nc that's already there. We'll step back a bit here. At the very top left of the menu, there's the hamburger button. Let's click on that. This will open up the main interface 
for where you want to look for a file. And as mentioned, I want to use my OneDrive, so I'll click on my OneDrive. And then once I've done that, it gives me the option to pick a specific uh, folder from within that. So I click on Files, and I'll come into that Transfers folder. And since I've already got this set to sort by modified date descending, I can just click on my tt.nc, and there is my G code that we posted earlier. And here's the back plot of that. And I, I chose this program on purpose to show one of the limitations of this, this viewer, this back plotter. And it seems to be can cycles are not great. Um, so it's a bit of a letdown, I know, but everything else works good. You know, G1s, G2s, G3s, all that motion and milling that you're going to be doing will show up uh, somewhat good. Uh, but just know that your can cycles will be lacking uh, in support.